All right, here's my sump tank, May 27th, and another sump tank. These are connected under the ground. That's an overflow pipe, that, and uh, so this one drenches that white pipe. Boom. Underground. And then comes out there. Boom. There's all kinds of circulation. So, uh, inch and a quarter pipe underground. There's sometimes some water differences between the two. We've got the main grow beds draining into uh, the first sump tank. And then the bathtub periodically drains and flushes into this sump tank. So there's always circulation but less in this tank. Next up, I guess, is my bathtub. Grow bed. This is the thornless loganberry. And it has loganberries on it. Which is a good one. Boom. Awesome. And the plant itself is very large. Thornless. All my favorite salad mix greens are going to seed, which is awesome. And uh, one of the stalks is <laughs> like nine feet long. Looks cool. I don't really like that kind of the greens though, but it's all right. We got a spider right here. Hmm. Oh well. He's pretty cool too. Brown. And this is the orange tree. Seems to be doing okay. A couple bug eating leaves a little bit, but everything in here is pretty a little bit bug eating. Uh, but all those weird yellow leaves seem to have disappeared. It's putting off fresh, happy growth. And uh, the leaves feel nice, waxy, firm. And I did see. A little, oh cool, a jumping spider. These guys are all over. Very fun to watch them do their thing. So this, uh, barrel is a new addition and um, it drains <clears throat> it gets water from uh, the top side here and drains out through that fitting boom and ties into the uh, um, <laughs> no more 90s so that's my 90 it ties into the existing grow bed drainage system and it actually gets fed as an overflow from the drainage from the main grow bed. Uh, see the small pipe on the right. And that's the same pipe as this one basically. And it's all pressure and elevation and I've got valves and uh, the normal stuff. Asian greens that my sister gave me. And uh, all these guys n never, never amounted to nothing. <laughs> but their brother right here, oh, looks beautiful. Looks beautiful. This is the thornless blackberry. And it started from just a little, uh, a little stump in here. 
but seems to be doing good now. Very, very slow to get started, but once it got started, it seems to have uh, sped up the beets. And I'm not growing them for the roots, tap roots. I'm growing them for these uh, nice little greens. And my strawberries, or the strawberries. Lots of white strawberries. Uh, looks like I'm hitting the right nutrient profile. But turning red. Oh, there's a red one in there. So good. And then the strawberries that came out from these strawberries are in the soil. But they came from little streamers from the aquaponic strawberries. And so now they seem to be doing okay. No berries to speak of. But it's a, a lot harder surviving down there on the wrong side of the grow bed with grass around you. The beets are putting out uh, all these little seed seeds. So I'll probably uh, mm -hmm. harvest those or save them. Trim back the parsley bush hard. And it looks ugly, and uh, I'm going to lose the parsley bush uh, probably at the same time I take out the peas because the peas are growing on the, uh, on the parsley bush. So it's a nice little support. Those peas look good. Something's been c coming in and boring all the peas and putting little holes in them. And it doesn't look good to eat. I don't know. Funky little pea. Not so funky. And uh, I buried a, a raspberry cane in this direction down the grow bed and that is one shoot and this is one shoot and then uh, that is one shoot and they're all coming off the same shoot that I buried down in the in the grass These green onions, and uh, they're way too big, uh, but they're putting off flowers. So uh, I've been tapping the flowers over in the grow bed and trying to see if we get some onions started, self-started. That'd be interesting. And this is all garlic, all from one store-bought clove, I believe, uh, two years ago. And some I've separated and let grow out, which this is one I separated and let grow out. And then this cluster here is one I didn't separate and let grow out. So all the bulbs kind of grew together. I'm not sure what's better, frankly. But we'll find out. I've got so much of this. And a lot. Of, it looks like the ones that grew together uh, that 
were left in a cluster, kind of were smaller. They were all competing with each other. We got celery, which seems to be doing good. Something is chewing it though. And my flower bush has flowered. It's got multiple stalks. And I believe it is a snapdragon. Very pretty flower. And then over in this corner of the row bed is a tiny little strawberry that I transplanted. And uh, now it's putting off, I uh, got a couple berries. One of them looks almost done. I harvested a cabbage from the main grow bed over here. And the other two cabbages are already starting to try to take over. And now the bell pepper though gets a, a shot at some light. And, uh, or that's the bell pepper, that's a poblano pepper. And uh, this cabbage has a head on it, good head. This one's got a good head. This one is getting a good head. That's water. It's amazing. I think the cabbage is hydrophobic. The cabbage leaf surface. This one's got not much of a head. Lots of leaves. And I think not much of a head, but it's getting there. Hard to say. And then scattered around is some kale. Kale starts. One. and uh, in between I don't know these guys will probably never make it or I don't know and then fighting for its own over here nice little tomato and the description was uh, Fire engine red salad tomato with bright yellow stripes and dark red flesh. Rich, sweet, and tangy, high yields, indeterminate, organic seed, 75 day. Flora Organica, I don't know. Uh, and my wife put that one there. I think it was a great choice because uh, it sounds tasty and it's indeterminate. So I think it kind of vines or can vine and I'm, I've got a big old trellis right here so plenty of space and uh, just gotta be careful not to disturb its roots when I harvest this cabbage maybe I'll cut the cabbage and leave the roots in place I don't know I'll figure it out So that's the update, and uh, uh, oh, I haven't gone over uh, or documented my filter tanks yet. So I've got a 300 gallon Rubbermaid stock tank filled with fish. Not really filled, but full enough. And the water comes out from into this barrel through that pipe and into this barrel through that pipe. 
and the water swirls around and also has to go down and come back up which causes uh, hopefully sediment to fall out so the water comes into this fitting goes into a 90 goes this way and then got a big flower pot that I cut a hole in the bottom and it also had some other holes in the bottom uh, that allows the water to come in and then go in the overflow pipe so it's not perfect but uh, it does collect a bunch of crap at the bottom and that is basically mirrored on the other side here The only difference is this one's uh, inlet tube is higher than this one's. And uh, I put duckweed in here so I could have kind of a duckweed generator, maybe to feed the fish, and also to block light because I was getting a lot of algae growing. You can see there's a little bit of algae growing in here. Nothing like it was, it was really bad. So I think that that uh, duckweed idea worked. Although the walls are transparent, so I don't know. All right, well, that's basically the update. Oh, there are a bunch of anacris on that, that one. And uh, that pipe. There's all my fish, which seem fewer in number since I got back. Hmm. So from those overflow tubes, one in that and one in that, comes out through that pipe and this pipe and drains down. And then I got a snorkel there, which sucks air down too. And that snorkel was needed to prevent airlock when the system stopped and started. Alright, well... System's coming along nicely.